art. There we go. So, Felicia, I, I suffer from um, a thing called picnic. Do you know what that is? No. It's called person in chair, not in computer. So my team slag me all the time. It's an absolute miracle that I've managed to press all the right buttons for this webinar. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So that's what they say. They say Ronan's suffering from picnic again. That's what they say, Felicia. Picnic. Well, I, want, picnic. I don't want picnic. I want a picnic right now, but not what you want. <laughs> I want something else. <laughs> not the, yeah, yeah, I know. You're like me. We like our food, right? We like, like our cake. I like food. I like cake. Cake first. <laughs> we can die tomorrow. Cake first. <laughs> so um, I'm sure everyone who's going to join us live or everyone who's going to join us on Insiders and everyone who's going to join us later for the replay already know Felicia. But for those who don't, who those who don't, Felicia, just tell everybody who you are and where you're from. I am Felicia Reed. I am in the United States. I'm in Austin, Texas. Oh, awesome. now I'm a portrait photographer and abundance mindset coach. And I am very happy. I'm a mom. I'm a wife, married 25 years, two kids, and a business owner full time since 2017. There we go. There we go. And guys, tell us in the chat where you guys are joining us from. We want to, we want to see you uh, and we want to, we want to get your questions for Felicia as we work through this. So Felicia, before we get into the mindset coach stuff, right? Cause I know we're going to yeah. deep dive into that, but tell us a little bit about your journey to become a photographer. Like where did that start? Did you always want to be a photographer or was it something that sort of just sort of appeared on the radar or at some stage? Oh, no, uh, I did not always want, no, I did not want to be a photographer. I was a mom with a camera. Uh, my kid is like 25 and the other one's like 19. And so I was in ultrasound school and x-ray school. Uh, most of my old eldest uh, life, his young, you know, toddler life. So I didn't really enjoy that because I was in university, you know, the whole time. And that was about the age of 28. I had my second child six years later. And I picked up a camera because I felt kind of guilty. Like I wasn't taking the pictures of my kid and I just wanted the best photos of my kid. Cause at the time there was this family fun magazine that came out and I was like, oh, I want my kids jumping on a bed and, and doing things. So I just picked up a camera just to document every bit of you know my kid's existence. And, and it was fun. What was that? That was like 2004, he was born. And so it, fast forward to 2009, it was our 10 year anniversary and I hired a photographer to do our anniversary and he's a wedding photographer. And you know, like everybody else, you will say, oh, he's like, I'm a photographer. And when you tell someone that they go, oh, I have a camera. And so I was like, oh, I got a camera, I'm a photographer too. You know, he's like, mm -hmm. and he's like, well, I have this, I'm changing from um, Canon to Nikon. Would you like to buy um, my Canon camera? It's digital. I'll show you how to use it. Cause I had like film and I didn't know, uh, you know, I didn't know anything. And he was like, I'll teach you the exposure triangle. And that's kind of how it started. And from 2009 to probably 2012, I was just taking classes at meetups and things around town, flowers, the moon, you know, street lights, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was in this group. And they were taking photos of all of these young Caucasian girls that were like really thin and, you know, looking very cute. And I'm in my mid thirties and I'm like, I don't look like that. And who's going to photograph me? Like I'm a woman's body. Like it's not, it wasn't fun anymore because they were all like perfect based on what society views perfection as. And, and so I was telling somebody, I was like, well, who's going to photograph me? Cause y'all don't know how to photograph me. And they're like, you need to meet Sue Bryce. <laughs> and I was like, really? And they sent me to her YouTube and I found her on creative live. And from 2012 on that's kind of, I just picked up this woman's portraiture and that's kind of how it started. So, so I'm fascinated about this. So you recognize that when you were at all these photographic training schools yeah. and events that the people who were being photographed didn't represent you, right? And then mm -hmm. you discovered Sue Bryce then and, and what, 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 what Sue teaches and you discover that there's other women in the world like you, right? Who, 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 who need to be seen, heard and understood for who they are and that, you know, they're, they're beautiful inside and outside and, and every way. And that needs to be celebrated. Was that sort of 
was that how you discovered your ideal client, that your ideal client's a reflection of you? Yeah, honestly, I am my ideal client. I am my avatar. People are like, who's your avatar? I'm like, I am me. So all that, it's easy for me to speak about that because in my mid thirties, my kids were getting older. I was kind of, okay, they didn't really need me, but they needed me. And I wanted to feel sexy again. I wanted to feel you know, like seen, I was always taking the pictures. I was never in them, but I love photos when you take them, right? You know, I wanted to look like the cover of Ebony magazine or Essence magazine for, you know, the beautiful black women. And, and I just, I didn't have that. And I just lacked a team. And that's kind of what kind of, I caught on from Sue Bryce. I just created the team that any movie star, anybody on a magazine had and they're, and we're real bodies. And, and it was, at first it was like, let me learn on my neighbors and friends and people from the hospital and I was just wanting to take pretty pictures. But as I took the photos, that's where they were like, oh my God, you don't know how much this meant to me. I haven't seen myself. And, and I was, and I come from the medical field. So I know how empowering it is to empower someone. It's not their diagnosis, no different in photography. You're not, you know, what you've gone through. You're not, you know, a divorce. You're not a cancer diagnosis. You're not, you know, just a mom, you know? So it was easy to translate from the medical field to, you know, to dealing with people you know, being relational. So it, it, it came very easily to me. I caught on pretty quick, like this is more than photography. And it was still my hobby for a really long time on the side until I quit. And then I was like, oh, maybe I can make money. You know, it, it didn't start that way. So, t- so tell us about that, that, that when you made up your mind to, you know, go into this full time, you know, and make a difference to those women with your photography, with the art and science photography, to transform them, to give them confidence, to allow them to celebrate their confidence. How, how, talk to us about that. Was that a really big decision to leave? What I'm sure people would tell you this, you've a sound secure job here and yeah. you've trained all your life for this and you went to university and you're just gonna give it up, Felicia. Well, I, I can't remember, um, I can't say it was scary. It was like sometimes, Sometimes we make decisions and it's very scary and we do it. And then sometimes God gives you just this overwhelming peace that you're just like peace. And you're like, it's time to move on. And I had an overwhelming peace because I just didn't like, I didn't like the bureaucracy. I had made it to the top. I wasn't earning, you know, it's like every reason not to give me a raise. Cause I was, I came in high and they never tell you they're going to cap you. And, and then I'm on call all the time. I'm just, it's just like a lot of work. I had a horrible boss a great field. I worked very hard to do what I did and it was good money, but I make great money. Like, you know, I can almost make in a month what I made in a year, you know, there, um, it wasn't that way in the beginning though, of course, but anyways, and so the decision, it came with a lot of prayer. I'm very spiritual. And, and it was just, it was going to happen. I was going to leave. I didn't know it was going to be for photography. Honestly, my son, that is here, he was in middle school and he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. And he wasn't going to school. And my husband's like, God has given me a raise. I have replaced your income with this raise. God has replaced, you know, your income with this raise. I need you to stay home and take care of this child and make sure he's in school. And so I stayed home, you know, I quit in November, 2016 and right before the holidays and it was fun and it was the holidays and I'm spending money and I'm doing the thing. And, and then, um, and it was, it was just ease for me to do it. But then my husband's like, you need to watch what you're spending. And that was that aha moment that I cannot be controlled by no man to tell me how to spend my money. You know, like I needed to have something of my own. And I had the mentality of nothing to lose all to gain because I didn't have to work. And if I did, I would be bold and courageous and ask for what I wanted. So out of the gate, I was just like, I want like, you know, $1,200 or $1,500. And, and that's kind of how it kind of started. So I had a piece, honestly. And yes, you have family or it wasn't even family it was more the people like you're going to do photography like everybody knows a photographer but they didn't know Felicia Reed like you know like I've just created a little bit different you know and I didn't I don't argue with people I'm like I will show them with my actions more than my words there we go important <laughs> right that mindset of of I'm going to show them with my actions not my words I love it I love it so tell us about the journey then to becoming a mindset coach right so what, what was it that sparked that? Well, I had coaches, right? I started like with Sue Bryce and then, you know, I had Megan DePiro, she was amazing, the next level. And then I did Steve Saperito, right? But as I'm moving on throughout, it's almost all the same whenever it comes to photography coaching. It's almost saying everybody's going to tell you almost the same thing, just a different kind of way of their spin. 
And I was just like, but there was limiting beliefs and things coming up and energy. And I learned about energy in 2019. I have a friend that is, was my, became my love coach and it was with my marriage. And I talk about this a lot and, and she helped me with my marriage. And at that point in 2000, Um, 19, I was just like, I, I'm so sad in my marriage and I'm just so sad. And at that same time, being sad in my marriage, my business was struggling. And she explained to me that energy transfers. It does not matter if it's your business, if your relationship, it's a friendship. And she helped coach me. She goes, Felicia, when you fix your marriage and your relationship, your business will fix. Right. So that was my first introduction to coaching. And that was 2019. We come to 2020 tip of right before the pandemic, January, I am like, everything is flowing with ease, booked out seven months in advance. We're in a pandemic. It's just like, everything was in flow. And she goes, how's life, Felicia? And I was like, oh, it's great. She goes, that wasn't the same energy you gave me this summer in June, you know, six months ago. Like you understand that you fix this and this is what fixed. So it made me think like, it's an energy thing. I need to always, my energy is a direct reflection of my bank account. And what I realized, is in our industry, nobody really talks about that. So I sought out in 2021, I sought out the next level. I said, if I'm going to break through, you know, different, you know, new glass ceiling every single time, every level you have to, you know, there's another breakthrough. I'm going to need that kind of support. And I sought out my mindset coach, funny. She was on TikTok. (laughs) Like, it was a godsend. I don't have to Google anybody. I don't have to search anything. I am so intuitive and so in tune with, you know, what I need and what God needs from me. I just prayed. I was like, God, I need a coach. Like I need something, someone that's not a photographer. I need someone that's going to work on energy. And I looked her up and I said, will you be my coach? I'll follow you. And she goes, no, I'm not going to be your coach. She goes, they had a great sales team. She goes, but I'm going to teach you how to be a coach. And through this five month program, you're going to also get coached you know, you will get the coaching, you will learn to become a coach. And her goal was to have a coach in every household, you know, and I started August of 2021. Yep. And I graduated in December with five certifications, hypnosis. I'm a hypnotherapist. I use it. I use the power of suggestion, but I wouldn't do the hypnosis. And I am certified in EFT, emotional freedom technique, where we do the tapping to release, you know, any overwhelm or anxiety or just to tap in great things you want. Um, Neuroenergetic wiring, meaning I can help you put goals into your future or goals into your past. Neuroenergetic encoding, which I can help you release limiting beliefs and things that are keeping you stuck from the past. And um, I'm also certified mindset coach. So those are the five certifications. And Everything, Ronan, everything in your life, there is never a mistake. You are exactly where you are and where you're supposed to be because God puts you there because I graduated in December, 2021, and I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2021. And breast cancer was like the most amazing journey for me. It was not a struggle because I had all these tools and I was like, ah, let's see if this really works, (laughs) you know? And I just like added it. And and honestly, people are like, you're a coach, you're a photographer, you do, but it's all one. It's no different. Like Steve Sabarito, he knows NLP and he knows it's all one. It's creating relationships. It's how I listen to someone. It's the tools that I can offer my clients or even the people that I coach, you know, like it's all one. I have just this big toolbox now that I can help you anchor something. I can help you release that limiting belief. I have better listening skills where I'm like, ah, oh, I understand. I hear what you're saying. You know, so it just, it's all one. It's not two separate things. I am considered now, I'm changing my whole name from a photographer to an empowerment coach. That's just what it is. And I use a camera. <laughs> yeah, so so let's let's just talk about, and I understand the empowerment coach and you use a camera to help with that empowerment, right? Yeah. And that's where they become one. But just talk to me, Felicia, a little bit about, you talk about limiting beliefs, right? And the, mm-hmm. I see this all the time in photography, mm-hmm. this limiting belief. I wrote that down. And yeah. The, and, and and yet, and yet, Felicia, like the work that we do, we do it right. Like the value we, we bring people, like the value you bring your clients and empowering them, right? Why do you believe that that limiting belief is so ingrained in so many photographers? 
it's not just photographers, it's anybody. It's just what we grew up with. Sometimes it's your environment that you grew up with. And it comes back from you being a child. You know, all of these things are instilled. Our brain is, our subconscious is like wide open up to the age of seven. So even if you out there and you have kids right now, be careful what you speak to speak over them. There's power in our words. There's power in everything. Like you will seal that in their life and they will carry that throughout their life. So it's not like it just happened to the photographer right now when they made the decision to be a photographer photographer it's a limiting belief that they've carried on from childhood from their surroundings money doesn't grow on trees you know that's too expensive you can't have those things you know whatever limiting belief if it has to do with money or or you'll never amount to anything or you'll never be anything like or or maybe there was a time in their life that they were on a stage and and um, they got laughed at or something when they were younger they carry that on so then they have shame to show up on um, social media or to do lives I mean, there's just so many different things that's carried on from our early on childhood. It's not like now. And they just never, they're not, I wasn't aware, as aware as I am now of, oh, that's not true. You know what I mean? That's not true of what I am and what I do, you know, because I have that awareness that, yeah, these limiting beliefs might pop up fear, scared, you know, it, you may feel that in your gut, but I'm aware to know, like, to ask myself, what is that about? Because this is not true you know, I'm going to delete that, you know? So sometimes they just don't have the tools to, or the, the know with all, or just the people or in their environment to help them, you know, with, whether it's therapist or coaching that those just are not true things. And there's got to be a way for them to release it. So Felicia, when, when you talk about, you know, all the, sort of, we are the end result of our environment from a very young age, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I absolutely agree with you. I, th I think that you see in, in children under seven, their creativity, and they yeah. always ask that most important word, why? And, and they're nearly told, don't be asking why, you know, why are you asking why? Mm -hmm. And, and we, we tend to knock is the wrong word. I don't mean physically knock it out of them, but yeah. we, we, we take away that desire to learn and to grow and to make a difference create, yeah, and to create and, and, and to do all that good thing, good stuff. So you're telling me though, that it's possible, right. To mm -hmm. retrain ourselves, right. To yeah. retrain ourselves, to forget that those past experiences and refine our energy and refine um, our, our abundance mindset and all that. Just like, what does that look like? So usually it's working. I mean, you could kind of do it on your own if you read about it or did something, but usually like it's all about going back to the time when someone told you you didn't feel enough and going back to that time and being disassociated with it. Because if you associate, association means I'm in the event, I'm being reminded, I'm sitting there experiencing that hurtful event. Disassociation means it's like I'm watching what's happening. You're disassociated from the emotions and so then you're kind of looking at that event and just the time when you, when someone told you you weren't good enough, looking down at that event, when someone told you didn't look that you were, um, where you're looking at it and they told you you weren't good enough, what kind of learnings can you take from that? What are the truths that you can take from that, from your past? I am good enough. I am well, I, I am, I can do anything that I want, you know, whatever those learnings are. And it's just a visualization technique that I take the client through and we, kind of take all the learnings. What else? What else? What else are you picking up intuitively? Like quickly, there's no thinking. It's just like what's coming to you subconsciously of all the incredible positive things, despite what you've been through. There are positive things, you know, even though they said you weren't going to make it, you are making it and you're doing great things and you can earn money. You can be whoever you want to be. And then bringing that back from the future, back over the every incident in your life where you felt you were not good enough, you were not worthy enough, you didn't have this and just repeating, you know, I am well, I have everything that I need. I am good enough. I can succeed. I can do these things. And it's just a technique and you just bring it all the way to the present. And then those are the things and then you can anchor those things in with EFT tapping. Like I am well, I am good enough. I have everything I need. Money flows to me easily and effortlessly. You know, people like me, people want to spend money with me. You know, there's other techniques on top of that that you kind of anchor that in. But that's kind of what it kind of looks like is just without coaching or without therapy is just looking at a belief that is a negative limiting belief. I teach this all time, write it in one column. These are the negative beliefs. And then you make three decisions. Is this true? Do I want to keep it? 
is this false and I want to delete it? Or how can I reframe it? How can I po positively reframe it? Which one do you want to do? You want to delete it? Do you want to keep it? Do you want to reframe it? That's something easy you can do without a coach. If a limiting belief is coming up, write it over here. Nobody wants to spend money with me. And then ask yourself, is this true? Do I want to keep this? Do I want to delete it? Do I want to reframe it? The right people want to spend money with me. You know what I mean? Or whatever. So those are some great ways that I use to help people through that. Does so that answer your question? It does. It does. I, I love it. I love this conversation because... Um, you know, I, I'm dear, deeply spiritual myself on, on, on some of this stuff and I meditate quite a bit and yeah. um, I find it really helpful and, and I have my daily affirmations that, that yeah. I write out every day. And um, so I, I, I'm, I'm curious about, um, I'm really curious about how you got here in terms of, you told us where you, how you got here, but what was the driver for wanting to learn these skills to help others like well, what's what's underneath what's in here that's, what's in that's there yeah. what's in there is i can't help anybody else unless i help myself i can't move i can't serve anybody unless i am filled with love and i am filled with gratitude and unless and until i deal with my own stuff and so me dealing with my stuff and seeing the testimony and the transformation on how it's had in my life i mean that one month was it 2019 2019, when I look back in September, I started coaching um, with my love coach in June of 2019. September, I remember, um, okay, then September came, whatever. Then 2020 came around, uh, September, a year later, and I I was discouraged. I was like, only made $40,000. I told my bookkeeper, I made only $40,000. She goes, that's great. What's wrong with you? And I was like, but I'm in this group and they're making $80,000 a month. And that comparison, it's the joy, you know? And she goes, Felicia, don't compare yourself to nobody else. Let's go back to September of 20, um, 2019. You made $6,000 all month. Let yes. that sink in. And that is a reflection of my energy at that time, because I was dealing with my marriage and my own issues, you know, and that was an energy thing. And then there was that shift. And so I knew that if I work on myself, that I would be, I just became, it was just, I didn't even intend it, you know, Ronan, I just became, it makes me cry, just a magnet. It was just my heart was open. I was a magnet to the perfect client, to the perfect people, to the perfect friendships, to the best marriage. I was dancing always in the kitchen. I was just doing everything. And that told me that I needed to continue this work. And it made me hungrier to make sure that as things happen in life, because as long as you live, things is going to happen, okay? That I would have the tools that I could bounce back. It doesn't mean I don't get discouraged. It doesn't mean that I'm not, you know, sad sometimes. It doesn't mean that I'm not angry or worried. I don't stay there long. I have tools now that just gets me out of it and keeps me moving. You know, I can, I can really self-regulate and I'm not limited. And I understand I am not limited to anything. I mean, there's just so much abundance and abundance isn't always money. I'm living abundant life. I'm healthy. I'm having an incredible marriage and incredible family. Like to me, that's abundance. Money is a bonus. You know, it's a great bonus. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's a great bonus, but I mean, that's kind of why I saw it. I knew another photography coach was not going to be it because we all have our own limiting beliefs. I needed someone from the outside that that was their specialty to help me navigate. And I have a coach to this day, you know, that helps me navigate these different emotions that come up and these different things and how to release those emotions and keep moving so that I can better serve as a wife, as a mother, as a business owner, as a coach, you know, whatever that looks like. So Felicia, you tipped on three great points in that last two minutes so we're going to deep dive into all three right okay. so, so so one of them you mentioned that your bookkeeper right who, who talked to you about and it reminds me of a book that i recently read i don't know if you've read it but it's 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 um the gap and the gain i um, have it and and the principle in the in the gap and the gain is don't be worried about where you are and what, where you're trying to get to right mm -hmm. measure your progress and where you've come from and mm -hmm. celebrate that and that's what your bookkeeper was telling you right yeah yeah which, yeah which is really, really fascinating yeah and um, that you know celebrate the gains so always measure backwards not forwards yeah. from yeah. where you've come from yeah um, and 
you can see that in you, right? That's what you're talking about now is. Yeah, is, and that's one of the techniques that I use. I don't have it here, but I have a dollar bill and you just take a dollar bill and you put it on the sticker and it's just like, thank you for the money I have ever received in my life. Not what is coming, but thank, being thankful for what I've already received in my life. Yes. Any abundance, anything. So that's one of the techniques I use. It's, it's pretty cool. And uh, we can't, because as you know, I'm a big Profit First fan, as you, you are. Oh, um, I love it. So, 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 so briefly tell us about, about Profit First and, and, and how that has helped you before, before we go into the next point. Oh, my God. you got enough time. Okay. So <laughs> I started Profit First in 2017. I think when I was there with you, I kind of told you I was reading this incredible book, you know, and the pumpkin plan. Like, I love Michael Mithlowitz. And um, so in 2017, I met my bookkeeper and she's a profit certified profit first professional. And we started, I didn't have any money and it was very scary to make that big investment for me to have a bookkeeper, you know, to actual, so that was one of the first things I delegated was bookkeeping because I didn't want the IRS coming after me and I needed her to keep up with all those receipts. You know, there's multiple things she does. And then, so she showed me how to do all my bank accounts and I have like six, seven, eight bank accounts. And, um, and then I was doing profit first. And if y'all don't know profit first, it means you just kind of pay yourself first and you run your business on what's left over. You know, you always have your, when taxes come around, you got your tax money. I bonus myself 5% every quarter. And I, that's when I could take my trips and, and do things like that. And so how it's helped me is it helped me when taxes came. Cause I remember that one, I don't remember what year it was. Maybe it was in 2019 or something. I had to pay like, I don't remember. It was like $24,000 in tax or something. That can be a very scary number to some people. I was so happy. I was like, here you go, you're gonna have it. Like, you know, I don't wanna own the government, you know? But then I'm like, we need to talk to my CPA so we can make this tax bill go down a little lower. You know, what else can I do? You know, so it was just making me more aware and it just made me happy. And if I needed anything, you know, everything would come out of my operating account. You know, when I needed something, if that got below a certain amount, then that means I can't have it. You know, and then I paid myself. So I was always bringing home a paycheck. So in 2020, right before the pandemic, I became an S corporation here in the States. I don't know what you call it there. So I became the first employee of my business. And so I'm on payroll. And so how that benefited me in 2020 was amazing. And I think even before then, before I was really on payroll, I started managing my money because as a successful portrait photographer, you can bring in 30,000 to 100,000 a month. You don't take all that money home. So before I was bringing in all this money and I told my bookkeeper, I was like, okay, before payroll, I'm just going to bring in, I don't know, like $8,000, you know, like that's all I get paid a month. And so then I had been stacking in, right. I could 35% of some of my money. I could, I don't know, every other month I could bring home 15 to $20,000 into my account. Well, I didn't spend all that money. So how it helped me was when we went into the pandemic, I didn't have to worry because I had this surplus in my operating account, that was just like, I was paying myself payroll and there was a surplus like building up. I wasn't bringing home all the money. So that like, that gave me, then I got, you know, all the other stuff. And then having a profitable, sustainable business like that and having your business set up with a bookkeeper and a CPA, let me tell you what that did benefited me is I was able to get the loans that I needed. I was able to get everything I needed through a pandemic because I had a track record and I had all of, everything was legit. Like I can, they were like, I need all of these papers. And I could just give it to them versus some people were struggling because they didn't manage their money well. Two, I get diagnosed with breast cancer. No different than a pandemic to me. I've got surplus of money built up, you know? And so I was able to pay my taxes. I was still able to work. Profit First has been like, it's just a dream to me and life-saving. My business is very successful. I can run a studio. I make sure I always have six to six months to eight months of income saved up. So if anything happens and that, yeah, what, what else would you like me to tell you about? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you did a great job already. So, yeah. so let's re rewind then to something else you said, right. Which I think is, is really something that's close to my heart too. And um, I'm a big Simon Sinek fan, you know, who, who talks mm -hmm. about eating with your why, why. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the money will look after itself. That's a result. And you said exactly the same thing. So, so a lot of your goals that you share with everybody is around that abundance mindset of attracting money to you, right? But how do you frame that in the same way as you talk about it being the result of what you do how, how does that all fit together 
And that's something, that's a fine line that I walk because I'm like, it really isn't about the money and I'm learning to change my language because I think I just speak it because it's easy for everybody to understand. But it is like, start with your little why, like, what is it your desires? It's, it's, it, it goes back to your identity at the end of the day, who you are, who do you want to be? Who's this person you want to be? You know, because maybe every person that you want to be, they don't have to be a millionaire. You know, you don't have to. I mean, everybody's going to have different goals, but I think it has to start with your purpose and your goals and your why. Why are you doing all of this? And what results? What results do you want to have? What what changes are you going to make in the world? What mark are you going to leave in this world? What is your bigger like why? Why? You know, like I want to retire my husband. I want to empower every single person that I come across. You know, I want to be able to touch people in a different kind of way. And with my belief system, God is going to use us many, many ways and make us abundant because if we're broke, busted and disgusted, we can't help nobody. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we got to be able to serve and having money is good. But I think the bigger thing is like my why is is like, you know, I want to empower everyone that I touch and I want to and it doesn't even have to be with photography. It's just who I am in my being in my identity. You know, and I feel when you're going out with love and gratitude, that's what's just the money just comes. It just comes. Abundance just comes. Okay. And when I tell you abundance just comes, I had a client. Let me just throw this in right real quick, real quick. I gained a lot of weight from chemo and I clothes are expensive and I have the best wardrobe in the world, but I just can't fit it. And I was just like, if I have to go buy another thing, one of my clients was like, Felicia, this jacket is too big for me. And I was like, I'll take it. And she goes, I'll trade you. And I was like, okay, I give her her bill, $3,000. I was like, how much is this jacket? She goes, $700. I was like, well, you surely can have another picture. Thank you. That's one less jacket that I got to spend $700 on. Brand new. To me, that's abundance. To me, being asked to go and speak in front of a room full of people to talk to them about whatever, that's abundance. To For me to be right here talking to y'all, that's to me, that's abundance because I'm sharing my testimonial with someone and hoping that it will you know, you know, help you in some kind of way. So to me, it is a starting with why your purpose and your goals and the bigger vision of what the identity and the person that you're stepping into, what is she doing? What is she saying? Who is she around? Where does she travel? And then you kind of be that person and then everything you need will come to support that bigger why, right? Yeah, so, so, <laughs> so, so here's what I've heard, right? And I've heard that, that comes before the money that the money is a result or because you hear some people saying you know you can only make a difference when you've got the money so you got to look after yourself first but sort of where is the balance there and it is that identity thing and it is staying into gratitude because i feel if you're always thinking about the money and you're worried about the money did you hear me you're worried about the money you're worried about where the money's you're worried about the money like that's a negative energy period if it's not love and gratitude you got to stay in that energy that positive energy then that's a direct reflection of your bank account because if you're worried about the money and you're worried about with taking care of yourself then you're not giving and god wanted us to be out here and to serve in so many different capacities than just with money we have incredible gifts to give to people and just to be love and to be the light in the world, you know, amongst all the darkness and stuff. And I feel when I lead, when I lead with that stuff, that all the goodness comes. And if you are leading with money, that's a desperation. If I got to get clients, that means I don't have, you're not going to have, you know, you're going to keep trying to get, you know, I, I need to get the money or I need my bank account. And, and you have to move from, it's a great thing to have goals and things. And it's like, I want these things, but then there has to be a point where you just assume that it's already done and pray for the inspired action for you to take, to move towards it, you know? So yes. you can, like a lot of us pray for something. Oh, I want 100,000. I got to pay this bill. Well, then you're in the energy of like, I am in lack. I don't have the money to pay the bill versus, you know, thank you, God, for sending me the clients that's going to take care of me or whatever. And then what action do I need to take? Then I need to start showing up in the identity that we talked about. How does this person show up in the world? What kind of energy does this person have? Because our, our clients smell and sense our desperation, right? If we're desperate, they mm -hmm. feel it, right? They sense it. And, yeah. and no one wants to be around desperation, right? They want to be around positivity and yeah. around energy and around people who just want to make a difference, which is 
quite evident with 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 what you've told us what what you're doing you know so so felicia let's say i am one of those photographers though right that i'm just struggling right that i yeah. build coming out my ears and uh, i haven't got the money to pay it and you know my family are gone told you so told you you couldn't mm-hmm. make it as a, as 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 a success as a photographer like what's the first step what's the first step i need to take First, you need to go into gratitude and the things that you do have. And when I say gratitude, I don't mean, I mean like, especially the things you take for granted, because we can always focus on all the things that we don't have. And then we're just like, you know, like, oh, I I need more money, but have you even been grateful for what you've gotten to this point? You know, like you still have a roof over your head, you know, like I'm grateful when I'm taking my walks in the morning, you know, and I'm just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, 100 times, thank you, thank you, as I walk every step, kid you not, it's, it's just, you do it so long, it's just what you embody, and it's just who you are, and your energy will shift when you go into gratitude, it's pure, that's what, the first thing I'm like, we can't talk about nothing, you can't, I can't coach you on taking no inspired action if your energy ain't right, because it's just not going to be right, and so literally like, I was just thankful that I can walk on a paved, wa- you know, paved road. I was thankful that, my God, we have clean water, like right here. We take these things for granted, you know, and I'm just so thankful for the person that invented the bottle that, you know, that created the whole warehouse and the trucks that delivered it to the grocery store. I was thankful. Oh, it's 150 degrees in Texas. I was thankful I can go get apples and bananas and things at the grocery store. And I didn't have to be in a freaking farm out here going, you know, knee deep in grass trying to pick fruit. I mean, like we have to go back to gratitude. That's the first thing, because that's the quickest way to shift your energy. And then you'll be open to receive any other learnings because you're just not if you're in a negative energy. So to me, that's the first thing is going into gratitude and, and just, just being like, and okay, I say going into gratitude and we can say it, but I feel the magic is in the feeling. Like you have to feel with your heart that you're grateful. Like it's an inside, it's an inside thing. I can't explain it. You can't just say, oh, I'm grateful for this. And you got a bad attitude. Like, you know what I mean? It's just gotta be like, go into gratitude. And it shifted. Like I was sick when I came over there to Ireland. I just didn't feel good. And I was in a negative energy. And honestly, May was the worst month. I think May was the worst month. My ankle was hurting. I was trying to drop it like it's hot when we were karaoke. And like, I was tired. Like all these things brought my energy down. And you probably could feel my energy. It's totally different from then to today, you know? And I just had, when I look back, I had the worst month. To me, like, I had like the worst month of the year. And it was like, I'm gonna tell y'all, cause you know, we are here. It was like $20,000 a month. To me, that was the worst month because there's a, a threshold that I have to operate at to operate a whole studio, right? But I still, I wasn't worried cause I do profit first. So then I'm talking to my coach and she's like, Felicia, you gotta shift this energy. You've got, you've got to switch it up. You can't, I can't tell you what to do until you switch up your energy. So I went into gratitude came back, that was May, came back from Ireland, right? And working on my energy. And then May 23rd, she had documented, Felicia, you're in a bad attitude. June 5th, I switched my attitude. I switched my energy, $18,000 sale. Highest sale ever, ever. Next week, $16,000. And it was like, I was on a roll. I mean, I brought in $89,000 last month. That was an energy shift. And I didn't do anything aside from switch my energy and went into gratitude, nothing but gratitude. And people think this is so, oh, that's so simple. It's not going to work. God, it works. I'm a living, breathing testimonial. But the, but the money was a reflection of your energy, right? Yes. It was a result of your energy and you empowering those women by having that energy to do so, right? Yes. And then being open to them making that investment with you. Because I see this a lot with photographers where they make the decision as to what the client should invest in, right? Mm, you don't spend other people's money. No, no. It's, you, you cannot get in the way of your clients wanting to invest in what they want to invest in that makes them empowered. Yeah. So wh- tell me when you made that switch. Like wh- when, when did... When did that, when did you get that little voice in your head saying, you know, you have to stop the person buying this, you know, when when did that happen for you? Mm, I mean, 
it, it happened pretty early on. Well, no, it wasn't. It probably, honestly, my business really, it was in the pandemic. I think it happened all that shifting after going through with my love coach and all that coaching. In 2020, I felt that that's when everything was, I was thriving. I was, I was in flow. I've stayed in flow. I've stayed in flow. 2020, 2021, 2022, going through cancer, still in flow. And then 2023, I did have a little dip, but I think it might've been just a lot of energy shifting. Like I finished my cancer treatments finally this past March and a lot of things. And then body self-image, I was dealing with body self-image things myself because my body's changed and I wasn't being very nice to me. So my energy wasn't, it wasn't there. And it was, and now I'm coming up because I'm working on self-image, you know, my self-image on me. And when I work on me and I'm happy, I can serve my clients and I can serve everybody else. So you've, you've just sort of told us, but I want to deep dive into that bit. So is it possible to serve your clients the way they need to be served if you have some negativity about yourself? Yes, it is possible. It is okay. possible. You may not be at your full, because that's how we all are operating. I was still running a business and I had some funky stuff, but I was still working. But I don't think you'll reach your fullest potential or you will, um, you know, have that like big leap. You know, like I had like June to now, like that's a really big leap for me to really be focusing on, I mean, mean, May to June for me to really be aware enough that something's got an energy needs to shift so that I can throw, you know, you just become, when you're constantly working on your mindset, you will just become so much more self-aware of energy and your feelings. And you'll be self-coaching yourself. Like, what is this about? I don't feel that way. You know, why am I angry? Why is this? You know, and you're just like talking to yourself a little bit, you know, and you're just more self-aware. I didn't do this before. You know, I didn't know, but you can, we all operate businesses. There's a lot of people, but maybe your business ain't going to last very long unless you shift, or you're just going to hit a point where you're going to be burnt out. You're going to be overwhelmed. And then you're going to just, just be a mess. You will, people operate businesses like that all day and all night, but are they thriving? Will it go any further than that? I've hit a ceiling. Why am I getting the same clients? Why is it always this? It's because you're calling in those clients and they will come. You call them, they will come and they will give you pure hell. Like, you know, the whole time, you know, they will come. You just have hell. But yes, you can operate a, but do you want to operate like that? (laughs) Because you're not operating in that abundance and that, you know, unlimited energy and thriving like that. So before I ask my next question, Felicia, yeah. Um, because I don't know what it is going to be yet <laughs> before I do ask it. Um, if anyone has a question, just ask it in the chat. We, we, we will take your questions, right? So if you've got a question for Felicia, ask it in the chat. So here's my question, Felicia. So you mentioned that you have a coach and you mentioned that you are a coach. Mm-hmm. So, you know, being in business is lonely, right? Mm-hmm. Like we have a small company in my company, we've got we've 36 people. And even with 36 people working the business with me, team members, it's lonely when you're the boss, right? Um, yeah. Like, what, what, do you think everybody, everybody needs a coach? Everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs some, I mean, just think about a mentor, a coach, because they are there to see the things, the blind side, they're to see your blind side. You're talking to them and they're like, but did you ever think about this? You know, cause sometimes we just get so tunnel visioned and this person did this and did it or this did it. And it's like, but do you see the bigger picture? Do you see the bigger picture? And they can hear you and you're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm doing everything fine, but this is happening to me. And they can be like, mm, no, because listen to what you're saying, you know? So they're able to give you different tools and techniques and they look at things a little bit different. They're like, mm, I mean, if you had a good parent, you know, that was coaching. I can't say your parent because everybody's situation is different, but I feel like you, it's no different than therapy. Therapy is a little bit different. I ain't got time for therapy. Seems that I, um, I quantum leap with coaches, literally quantum leap with coaches. And um, I don't feel I would have gotten this far without a coach, you know, and I did. And I guess it was two years in that I really got my love coach. And then I was more aware and understood. And it made me start reading more books and more investigating more. How can I manage this myself? And then you get to a point where you just cannot manage that yourself, that you need to seek out someone else because you know, something is holding you back and there's no photographer going to get rid of that. Like it's going to have to be somebody 
that has tools and techniques to really release those trapped emotions and release those things so that you can quantum leap, that can give you the tools and techniques that you need, that you can move forward. And coaches are not, honestly, there is a difference between a mentor. I, I walk a fine line. A mentor tells you what to do. A coach is a listener. A coach does not tell you what to do. They listen, they do active listening. And then they might say, well, did you ever think about this? Or what do you think? Because at the end of the day, each of us have the answers. We just need somebody to coach it out of us. We all have our answers. We were born that way. We we're born with the purpose in mind. So we all have the answers, but a really good coach will get it out of you. And you'll be like, I already knew that. You know, and then like encourage you to do it. A mentor will tell you what to do. And what's, what's, because I was going to ask you the difference between a mentor and a coach, and you just answered it before I've asked it. So, so, so tell us, Felicia, so do you need both? Uh, I think I need both, to be honest, because I have a coach um, and she's, she's my like spiritual coach and we did work with harmony and, um, in my life, like making sure, you know, I'm healthy, I'm mentally healthy. I'm physically healthy. My relationship is healthy with my husband. My relationship is healthy with people at work. My relationship is healthy, you know, with my own self, you know? Um, and then, but she doesn't know my industry or my business or maybe moving like that physical part of the business aspect of coaching that you might need. And so I'm probably going to be like looking for that as well. And yeah, because there's coaches for different things, kind of like there's doctors, you got a heart doctor, you got a gastroenterologist, you got a liver doctor, you got an orthopedic doctor, you got a breast surgeon, you know, like you don't want them over here working a breast surgeon working on your bones. Okay. No different. Like I had a love coach. So she dealt with the love part. I have a physical coach, you know, that helps me with physical, you know, with um, weightlifting and stuff, right. There's different coaches for different things. It just depends on what you're weaker in is the coach that you would seek out to help you. Great. So Janice, we have a couple of questions, Felicia. Yes. So Janice wants to know, so to do a 90,000 months, how do you do your marketing? That's the most beautiful thing, Dennis, is you don't do any marketing. It just flows. Like it just came. I didn't do anything and I didn't even work hard. I did not. And and I um I just show up in the best version and best capacity of me with a different kind of energy. Mind you, Janice, uh, I mean, everybody's different and I can't say what God has for you, but I've been putting in the work for a really long time. You know, I've networked like a psycho and and I'm always on social media. So I've been planting the seeds and I just shifted my energy and the perfect person looked for me. They looked for me. The inquiries you, just came. You did build an amazing following though, Felicia, with, yeah. you know, like I, I remember going back to 2019, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And I remember us, we having a conversation and you saying, Ronan, my clients ring me just because they want to dance in my in the kitchen. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you still yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah, but we haven't done. I, I did build a kitchen in my studio, and Ron says, "Do you have a home studio or, or a storefront?" I had a home studio for the longest, Ron. I just tomorrow is one year that I have built. I purchased my own studio in the middle of going through cancer and chemo. That's mindset. That's mindset. Who does that? Who goes? Oh, you got a cancer diagnosis. Oh, I'm going to build a studio. <laughs> Most people would shut it down, right? Oh, and they would think the worst. But I, I built a whole studio. We yeah. talked a couple of days before you you went in for your operation, and I remember you you telling me that, and I was going, "Wow, I just love that positivity. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's infectious." Yeah. So, so, so Felicia Tara wants to know. So, what about all the the shoot and burn photographers who are giving a hundred digitals away for nothing? I'd love to answer this, but I'm gonna let you because you you're the star today. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. Well, I mean, Neiman Marcus ain't worried about what Walmart's doing or the dollar dollar store. You know, they got that dollar store, everything for dollar twenty five. You think Neiman Marcus? You think those are two target? Okay, mind you, I've shop at Neiman Marcus and I go to the Dollar Tree. Okay, like it's right down the street. You know, like it's focusing. You can't be worried about where everybody else is doing. If you're riding down the highway with GPS in, you need to be there in 30 minutes and you start rubbernecking, you ain't going to get there because you're going to run into somebody else. You're going to run into an 18 wheeler. You're going to run into the side of the road, a tire that's on the road because you're looking over here worried about what everybody else is doing. It ain't none of your business. It ain't none of my business. I am in the energy and I know who I want. I know who I serve. Is they're going to come to me because I show up. Not only do I know, I know the identity that I need to be to show up for that person. 
those high-end stores, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, they're not worried about Walmart or dollar store. They're just not. They know their target demographic. They know who their audience is and that's how they're going to show up. They know their avatar. So I don't know. Maybe you send them to me so I can coach you. Send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Anna wants to know, so how do you keep bringing in clients and showing up for your clients, right? When you are going through a tough day. Well, that is just it. And sometimes you'll, on those tough days, sometimes you'll just dial it in and I'm self-aware to know it's a tough day. And so I'm very spiritual. So in the morning, I mean, honestly, y'all, if y'all want to know my morning routine, I literally roll out of the bed. I go for a walk in my quiet. No, I do have the phone on me, but it's not on. And I don't look at the phone first. And I just am quiet time because I need to hear what God has for me today. And if I'm in a negative mood, I need to get into nature. I just do. And I've always done that. And especially going through chemo, I needed to keep moving my body. So I literally roll out of the bed, go for a 45 minute walk. My goal is 10,000 steps a day. And this is very important because energy needs to move. If you're just going to be in a bad mood and you're stagnant, it's only going to get worse. You need to release it. And I'm sorry, there's something about being outside. So then I come back and it's literally 30 minutes. I write my 10, 10 things that I'm grateful for. I have a long list over here of all my desires. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you. I go through those desires. I feel what it feels like to have them. I read my Bible. I go through my verse and I meditate on that. And I just... And I'm just writing gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm just y'all 30 minutes. I kid you not. Sometimes my husband's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, don't mess up my, don't, don't mess with me right now. This is my quiet time. So I go into, you know, and that's what I do. And even, even in those days that it is bad, you know, I might've felt a bad energy last month. I always know, I don't know what it would be like if I didn't do those things. I would probably be in a worse funky attitude, but I still showed up for the clients that I did have. And, um, I just, I just constantly am working on me and I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to, but I know I'm feeling that way. And so I know I need to just work on gratitude and just being grateful and me being in the word and reading, you know, my Bible in the morning and just writing. I mean, I write, I have, I don't know how many, I mean, look, look, y'all, this is like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then I have scriptures highlighted. And I mean, I have books and books of these of journaling of just like, I don't, that's what I do. I don't know how else to explain it. It seems and, easy, but it's, it's magical. And, and Felicia, it's critical that first time, like a lot of people going to bed and a lot of people waking up in the morning, the first thing they open is their mobile phone, right? Yeah. Which yeah. is the worst thing you can do, right? You, you got to make is. that. And it is, a, it is a very, uh, it's, it's a, a discipline that you have to have. But I know for a fact, when I am doing really well, I'm not, that's not the first thing that I open up. So whenever you're doing really bad, kind of look back at the things you're, what have been your steps throughout the day? What have you been doing? What have you been allowing to be in your, you, we're already in bad energy. You need to check your environment. You don't need to be looking at the news and adding on to it. You don't need to be reading the paper. Adding, you don't need to be looking at your phone and being triggered by something because you have like, you know, this competition kind of energy going on. You really need to check your environment. So I know when I'm in bad mood, only thing that's coming in is good. Either I'm doing praise and worship music or I'm just dancing or I'm moving my body, even just dancing. Like it sounds silly, but you got to move that negative energy out. So you got to walk, you got to dance. And I know you're like, I don't want to dance. And then you get the music and you're like, okay, okay. <laughs> you know? And it's just, I swear to God, y'all, it sounds silly, but it works. It does it's a work. technique it's that nobody it. teaches you, but it works. It does it does it does work yes. so i'm gonna put on my eyes here because i need to read michelle's long oh. question so michelle says wondering how to balance being realistic about the state of your business was not what you want yet and staying positive to allow for the changes in the right direction well i was i mean we've all been there i mean i got it's it's really knowing what you want and and I think it's just literally people have said this 50 million times, even surprised I me, mean, but it's what coaches, that's what they teach you. You start with creating achievable outcomes. What do you want? Sometimes you want to be realistic about your business. I wanted to be realistic about the people that I was hiring. I wanted to be realistic about the, I was getting terrible clients at one point. I was like, okay, I need to be realistic, but what do I want? And I would literally write what I want and I would feel it like, what would it feel like when that person was here? 
what would it feel like when a client was just like, oh, that's $10,000. And the client's like, yeah, you know, what would that feel like? And it's embodying that energy and it will shift. And it's just like, this is what I want my business to look like. I understand, Michelle, you don't want it to look like what it looks like now. But if you focus on what you don't want, it's just going to be a boomerang and come right back at you. And you're going to keep getting what you don't want. So I think if you can just challenge yourself in just the next couple of weeks to, you know, a month to really know what you want, because what God has for you is for you. And he gave you the vision. He's going to give you the provision. Like it's just going to come. And I think that if you just write down, this is what my business, these are the clients that come to me. They're just so nice. They're lovely. They're just so happy to be here. You know, they, they like money has no object to them, you know, um, and this thinking that abundance comes to me in expected and unexpected ways. It may not, I mean, you look for the money, it'll come. You know what I mean? It may not even be with a client, you know, or whatever the provision will just come. That's what I would do. I would start to shift the energy to what I want and feel what I want and embody the kind of person that you want to be. Evidently, you don't want to feel like this. So how do you want to feel? And just start showing up. It's almost, I, I, I kind of say fake it till you make it, but showing up, what is you, what are you going to dress like? Sometimes just changing the way you dress and the environment and the people that you get around will shift that energy because we will kind of seclude ourselves when we're going through some things. And honestly, we do not need to be alone. We need somebody that's going to empower and encourage us because if we're alone, our little brain and the little demons just go to town and then depression and anxiety and overwhelm gets in. You need to shift your environment as well and get around or try to find people. It doesn't even have to be photographers. I prefer not to be around photographers. I just want to be around people where we don't have to talk about business that we can't forget that we have a whole life to live. It's not just about, I'm not living for work, right? You know, or working to live. I'm working to live. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> We got you. We got you. I hope that helps. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does. And Perla has a really good question. So how important do you think it is to niche down your ideal market, right? Or who your ideal client is? Or how do you communicate in your marketing to different women? The person who wants a personal branding session is different than the one who comes maternity and you do them both. So I think the question that is asking it so because I, I see this a lot felicia i see a lot of photographers what falling to the spray and pray course that i talk about that they're afraid to identify who their ideal client is and attracts those clients to them what's your approach to that for me my target audience is having your avatar down and my target demographic is the woman over 40 is me you know i am my target demographic but also I feel when you start serving that target demographic there, it's like a spider web. That one person is connected to many people. And if you follow me, I do personal branding. I do maternity. I do boudoir. I do men and beauty legacy portraits. And I have just a system over weeks. I mean, you know, throughout the week, it's like Monday, I'll talk about products and services today. I'll talk about me tomorrow. I'll talk about maternity. The next day I'll do it live. And then, you know, I have this system of social media, but all the time, that's what's in my description. That's in all my marketing is women over 40, but I do get 30 year olds. And of course, these 40 year olds, they may come for a beautiful brand, uh, a beautiful beauty photo shoot or boudoir, but they also are a business. So those are other ways we can serve our target client. You know, and I think they just kind of know by going on your website or you talking to them, by the way, or if they're coming into my studio, they will see, you know, uh, if they come for personal branding, which I love, I don't love personal branding, but I love it. That is like, um, what do they call it? It's just like um, a, a drug. Like, you know, what do they call that? Uh, introductory drug to come in. I don't do drugs. Um, just don't listen to what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Are you talking about the natural drugs or the unnatural uh, drugs? No, okay. no, no. Okay, never mind. Okay. X that. <laughs> no opening. Anyway, no so they come opening. in for a personal branding, but they see boudoir on the wall. They see couples. They see beauty. And then they can see that I can serve them in many other capacities. And they're like, oh my God, I want to come back for this. You know? So in my marketing, I make sure that I touch point on everything I do. Um, I show it, I show it, but it's all, it's all very cohesive and it kind of all looks the same, except on Instagram. I don't really post headshots. I'll post them in my stories. Cause I'm always having a headshot day every month. I mean, every week. Um, but you can do it. You can do it, but I'm very niched. Like I do women over 40. Like, I mean, that's, that's what I market to, but it just, it's an energy thing. So they don't care what you sell and they want some of it and they want to give you your mo their money. So just if you want to take them in, but I don't do babies and I don't do events or weddings and 
you know, I'm just going to be like, no, you know, I'm going to have boundaries and I'll be like, I don't do that. Or I want something colorful and with all brown. I'm like, I don't do all that. That's not my work. So Felicia, I know you have a coaching session very, very shortly. Yeah. So last question, right? So, um, and we've had it from a couple of people, but it's around pricing. So how do you, how do you align your pricing with your positive energy? Like how, how how do you construct that pricing so your clients can spend as when they see you price as being priceless at what you do right for yeah. them and they spend that money with you? How do you construct your pricing to enable that to happen? How do I construct my pricing to enable them to spend money? Well, I mean, I do have um I do have like three packages. I just make sure, I mean, I have three common. They're not set in stone, but these are the three common spending packages that my clients usually spend on, but they're LA able to uh, buy more. And so I make sure that I, um, the key is the incredible service that I give and every step of the way. So they understand my pricing, but when they come in, I'm giving more added value, more value, more value. And I present to them so much more and I'm coaching them through every aspect of the photo shoot. Like, okay, this is wall art. This is what an album looks like. And I'm getting to know them and doing the interviews. Like all of that allows them to spend more because it's like, yeah, this is kind of the beginning prices, but you know, my average client's going to spend like eight to $10,000, you know, or something like that. And um, that's how I do it. And then on my website, whenever someone comes to inquiries, it kind of already has like, like a wedding photographer, pick your investment. And so they kind of understand that it's going to cost them a lot of money. All right. <laughs> I hope that answers. I mean, they're gonna, it's not a lot of money. That's not true because that's really not compared to like a Lamborghini or something. It's not a lot of money. It's sub subjective, right? You know, but it's going to be a big investment. Felicia wants to know what 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 it's spelled slightly different with same name. I think Felicia wants to know Felicia what what do you sell? So you sell wall art, you sell albums, you sell folio boxes, uh -huh. mm -mm. albums, no? wall art, and folio boxes. There we and go. I sell confidence and empowerment and and community and network. <laughs> there you go, and that's the most important stuff, right? That's yeah. the most important stuff. Yeah. All right, Felicia, we could stay talking for hours and hours and hours, but thank you so much, my friends. You are inspirational. Your energy is amazing. I just love talking to you. And thank you for coming to Ireland to see us at Future Photography. It was great oh. to see you. I know you weren't feeling the best, but it was, it was so great fun just to spend yeah. some time with you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, y'all know how to get a hold of me if you need any more. We could do like a one on one sessions if they need anything. Um, follow me on Instagram, Felicia Reed Photography on Facebook. I'm glad to connect. I don't know how. I mean, I hope I helped you today. You did. You did. I know by the reaction. There's love hearts and everything in the chat, Felicia. Great job. And I know you have um, other people to go and, and coach. Yeah. Now. So I'm not going to hold you any longer. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Bye. Bye-bye.